lips. Do you remember that scene? And so, yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, he thought he had privacy, but here the AI is effectively spying on him. Uh, so my basic question is, where do you come out on the AI debate? Um, is it sort of the most important discovery of humanity, or are we unleashing the demons, uh, as some of my friends have said? Well, like, like many other uh, points of technological progress, the answer is both, right? Uh, the same methods of social communication allow us to reach across borders, allow adversaries to do the same. Um, when we think about artificial intelligence, uh, I'm actually not terrified that we're going to have sort of this perfect algorithm that's going to categorize everybody, uh, because I've worked at the NSA and they've already tried to do this. Uh, and the problem is the false positive and false negative brain. Uh, mass surveillance allows them to collect records about all of us, right? They know exactly where you've been because of the movements of your cell phone. They know everything you've ever bought. Uh, they know every web page that you've ever visited for the length of their buffer. Now, they say this is fine and it's not a violation of your rights because they're not looking at you. They're not looking at you and saying, this person, I want to get that uh, without a warrant if you're American. If you're not American, they'll, they'll look at you. Um, but they'll go, it's only machines looking at you. Well, the vast majority of automated analytics actually don't really work that well because let's say they've got an 80% uh, success rate, they're 80% accurate. Now that might sound good, uh, but when you think about for every 100 people, that means 20 people are going to be falsely identified as terrorists, or 20 terrorists are going to be falsely identified as non-terrorists. Suddenly that doesn't look so useful. Even if it's 99.999% effective, uh, when you're looking at populations of the scale of 330 million Americans, 7 billion people on the planet, that is, suddenly you're making millions of people from terrorists who aren't terrorists before, and vice versa. Uh, these are problems that will always exist because, as you may know, uh, artificial intelligence and sort of learning algorithms, uh, uh, neural network, all of these things, they work on probabilities. Uh, even in, in human knowledge, when you break things down in sort of Bayesian sense, you're ultimately going, is this more probable or not? And that works in a lot of things, but it doesn't uh, necessarily work in terms of making light bulb decisions, or at least it shouldn't. Now, increasingly, of course, it will be, uh, and increasingly problems will be apparent as a result of that. But I think because we will recognize uh, that these problems emerge, we'll go to the traditional uh, sort of things that we've always believed in this country, uh, which is it's better to let, you know, sort of a guilty man walk than to punish huge numbers of innocents uh, in the pursuit of one person who did something and who used their life, who abused their capabilities. Technology is capability. Artificial intelligence is the same thing. It is a capability. It is a magnifier of potential. If you give you know, an individual uh, an artificial intelligence that will do their work, suddenly that individual may become 10 times uh, more capable. If you give the same thing to a government uh, that makes the government 10 times more capable, the gap between them actually grows because the government had more relative power prior to magnification. But uh, I think that's what I'm So um, you're using a beam uh, to, to beam in from some other part of the planet. Uh, I, have, I have, I think, last count, like 28 beams, about a dozen at Singular University, a half a dozen at X Prize uh, at my home, my folks' home, uh, around, and I, I use this as sort of like a basic business tool to to get around. How has Beam? How have you used Beam? And 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 you know, being I think the right term is in exile. How does what? How does this affect your daily life and your mission? Well, one of the sort of incredible things that's actually almost hard to believe uh, is the fact that, you know, when I left the United States to work with journalists, uh, and I was trying to seek asylum, the U.S. government basically canceled my passport as I was transiting off the route to Latin America. Uh, and I haven't been able to travel since. But yet I'm sitting here in Las Vegas with you guys, you know, at CBS. This is an extraordinary change in the nature of the relationship between individuals and states. 
uh, government is becoming, in some ways, and this is, you know, it's, it's fairly controversial, but less relevant than it has been before because people have more capabilities to provide for themselves, to achieve for themselves. Uh, and this is critical for keeping governments honest because governments today have also been more powerful than they've ever been in previous society. You know, we have drones uh, that at any given part of the world, far from any power. Uh, in places like uh, Yemen, with which we don't have an active state war, uh, are actively dropping bombs. Uh, you know, and that may be a terror, right? uh, but it also might not be. Uh, and these these things do happen, uh, whether by mistake, whether intentionally, is not really material. But abuse is inevitably the product of power, right? Uh, like. Pollution is a byproduct of the industrial process. We have to figure out how to address these things. We have to be able to figure out how to respond to these things. And increasingly, we're seeing a new form of exile, a new way of exile. Uh, where, for example, in China, you've got artists like Ai Weiwei, uh, who have criticized the government.